So yeah, bringing it then back around to our relationship with food, if I think that who I am is this fixed person, um, and everybody else is kind of a fixed person that I work with, then how does it work that I can be with somebody and be in a really good mood, and so food is not on my mind? <laughs> and I can be with that same person, and and you know we're both in a low mood, and it's like let's go get something to eat. <laughs> how it, life isn't so much about who I am as this body, as this form, as this fixed thing. Life is my experience in the moment. And so even if I'm thinking about, I'm worrying about something in the future, that's still me experiencing this moment, worrying about the future. Or I can be concerned about something that happened in the past. Oh my gosh, I forgot to do something or other, and you know that made it awkward for somebody. I feel so much embarrassment. I should have let it up. That's thinking about the past, but my experience is always what's happening right in this moment. My thinking about the past, my thinking about the future, or my being in the moment. And so. What I'm seeing in terms of our relationship with food is how who we really are is the, the experiencer of our experience in the moment. And the more aware I become of that, the more I'm at peace with whatever I'm thinking. Is this making sense? That is, you emphasize that part. Where? Yeah, it's like um, when I am aware that who I really am is my experience of what I'm thinking about, then I'm not as caught in the sense that what I'm thinking about, which is creating my feeling, my high mood, my low mood, my wanting this food or, or realizing, no, I don't want that food. I'm not as attached to that experience as being real in the sense of it has something to do with who I really am. My desire to feel good is, of course, what I'm drawn to naturally, but who I really am is always okay. As an experience, everything that happens actually doesn't impact me as the experience. I'm going to give you a little analogy, kind of like when we go to the movies, big white screen up there, right? You get there, nothing, well, it used to be that nothing was going on. You can see how far back I'm having to remember that. They've always got some kind of commercial. They're going to keep you busy. So there's already something on the screen, but you know, there's just a big white screen there. That big white screen isn't influenced at all by what is projected onto it. Whether it's a happy scene, a love scene, a horror scene, a war scene, that screen is not touched. But boy, do we experience a different feeling as a result. So what I'm suggesting is that who we really are is a lot more like the white screen in a movie than all the stories and storylines that get projected on it. Our thinking about the past, the future, what to eat, what not to eat, all of that is the movie, the storyline being projected on the screen. And when I get identified with that as who I am, I'm wanting to do something. I've got to change what's on the on the movie screen. If it's not a, a nice picture on the, uh, on the screen, I want to go into a different movie. And we use food to change the movie. The more I'm aware that I'm the screen, the less reactive I am to what's on the screen. So that's what I wanted to say about that. Is that making any sense? Anybody? 
So getting to know who we really are can really shift our relationship with food. And how we know who we really are is when we're present in the moment. That's who we really are. And that eliminates all of the crazy making that our thinking can motivate us toward things that aren't in our best interest. Mm 